it has never dawned on me to to journey to to England, um, which you know would be the mother country, as they say, quote unquote, for Jamaica. We're still a part of the Commonwealth, and um, it is a privilege to have got my first class seat. Amen. Um, a London's airline. <laughs> and to be able to journey with you this morning. I am privileged, I'm honored uh, to share with you the word of God today. It's family across the entire world, church. It is focus on the family. Um, I think you will call it in England, what do you say? It's um, family enrichment, am I correct? Yes. Yeah, family home day, yes. Family home day, right. Family home day. Thank you so very much, um, uh, Islan, for that. And um, we do have um, that service as well over here from last week's 13th until the 20th. We are focusing on family. And so whether you're, um, you know, whether you are like Melissa, who has members of her family with her, I assume, or you are like Jenny, that might be by herself at this time, or if you're like Joseph, who is looking to figure out which part of Jamaica I'm from, <laughs> we want you to know that this is about family. And I've chosen to give a different focus, um, Sir Adrian, um, Madam Emma, I've chosen to give a different focus than normally would be focused on when it comes on to the family. So I'm going to ask you to just join with me and to pick up from where our reading would have left us. John chapter 9, verse 20 to the verse 25. John chapter 9, verse 20 through to verse 25. And the scriptures say, His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we know not. Or who has opened his eyes, we know not. He's of age. Ask him, he shall speak for himself. These words speak his parents because they feared the Jews. Mm. For the Jews had agreed already that if any did confess that he was the Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. And again, called the man that was blind and said unto him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. Verse 25 and last, he answered and said, mm, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. But one thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. Can the church say amen? I've chosen to give focus on this passage of scripture this morning under the title, When Mother and Father Forsakes. Under the title, When Mother and Father Forsakes. Your heads are bowed, loving heaven, eternal heavenly Father. We come to you this morning because our spirits are not at peace until we find its peace in you. So we are giving you our hearts and our minds. We ask you, Almighty Father, to cleanse our hearts, to purify our minds, 
and to lift us up into heavenly places with you divine. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me see the hands of all those who have children. Anybody here has children? If you have children, just, just wave your hand, raise your hand or use the hand raise feature. Yeah, I, I see some children here. I saw um, the Guzman, that's the Guzman's family. I see some children there. I say hello from Jamaica. Yes, hello. You know, children are a very important part of family. In fact, many individuals start a family um, so as to have children. Uh, they desire to continue the lineage across generations. Um, in the Old Testament, you will be very well aware uh, that the firstborn child was very important. When that child was the male, it was even significant because it showed that the masculine gender would continue its promulgation from one generation to the other. Even today, men, unlike me, um, feel that they must have men, boys. You know, a man likes to have his name passed on to the next generation. The Lord said, Oliphant, it's not going to work for you, so you're going to give you three girls. So I got one, Isabel, two, Caris, and three, Zahira. Male and children are very important. And so you would have understood the great disappointment that this family would have happened. And not only do mothers and fathers want to have a child, but they want to have a healthy child. They want to have a child that is a bouncing baby boy or a gorgeous, beautiful girl. That is important. Because everybody understands that with, when it's otherwise, it can put a lot of strain and stress on the family. But today, I would like not like to speak to those of you who have perfect families. Uh, today, I don't want to speak to those of you whose family is all together. Today, I want to speak to the families who have disabilities in their, in their, in their midst. Today, I want to speak to the families who have brokenness in their experience. Today, I want to speak to those families who are not perfect. Those families who are battling with questions and with doubts and with fears. Today, I want to speak to those families who are facing hurdles and are going through great challenges of life. Um, I know a majority of you here, you, you have a perfect family, but maybe there is one person here who needs this message today. Maybe there's one person here who needs to understand that irrespective of where you are born, irrespective of the family into which you are born, that God still has a plan for your life. That God still has a blessing coming your way. That God still can open up doors that no man can shut and can shut doors that no man can open. So come with me back into the time of Israel. Come with me to what we believe is a is, is a is a powerful message from God. In John chapter 9, we're open to the fact that Jesus is passing by. Brothers and sisters, when Jesus is there is victory. When Jesus is passing by, there is hope. When Jesus passes by our Zoom meeting, there can be deliverance. When Jesus passes by, we can dream beautiful dreams again. In John chapter 9, we're told that Jesus, while he was passing by, saw a man who was blind from his birth. Now allow me, brothers and sisters, to pick up from there. Come with me to the day when that mother entered that room, that delivery room. And as she gave birth to this son, the child who she, she would have born for nine months, the child who she, she would have carried and nurtured in her womb for such a long period, Come with me, brothers and sisters, as she the final day of delivery has arrived. She enters into that nursing room. She enters into that delivery room. And as she's in 
that delivery room, brothers and sisters. As she's in that delivery room, brother and sister Hanson, she, she's expecting joy to flow from her heart. Brother Roy, she's expecting that today will be the day of change. She's expecting that today will be the day of opportunity, brother Roxy. Today would be the day, Marsha Lee Matthews, blessings to you from Jamaica, she, that today is going to be the day when her story will change. The Bible doesn't tell of it was the first child or the second child or the third child but the bible tells us that she had a child that child was born but brothers and sisters as that baby was born and that baby came out out of her and as 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 that nurse carried the child and gave her in the midst of her arm brothers and sisters she was happy she was filled with joy but something was brought to her attention a little bit later something was brought to our attention what was brought to our attention i don't know if it was the same day i don't know if it was within the same week but the bible lets us know that they found out that the child was born blind picture the heartbreak of that mother hear the cry that runs through her her heart, see the pain and agony on her face as the child that she had desired to, to, to be a healthy baby now is born with a physical defect. No is born with lack of sight. No is born, brothers and sisters, without the ability to see what his mother, his father looks like. Is unable to see what the world around him looks like. Is unable to recognize what the difference between white and black, red and orange, the colors and the various shades of the world look like. He will never be able to see what a flower is like. He will never be able to see his mother's beautiful face. He will never be able to walk like you and I walk and be able to journey through life with the ability to know where his next step will be placed. Picture with me this mother as her entire mental process is now reorganized. Picture this mother as her entire being, as her entire life now takes a different turn. She has to move things out of the way for her child. She has to now take the child to the particular school to learn braille she's now placed in a unique situation the father has to now extend his financial resources beyond what was expected picture the agony of this family picture the pain looking forward to a child being born healthy and instead having a child with a defect and not only is the child born with a defect she joined her Chioi, chai, chioiota, is it chioiota? Yes. Yes, man, hello to you, man. Picture them as they now, as they are born, as they are going through the various months and the mother is now faced to ask questions, is Amy Davis. It's now asking questions, what would I have done? What would I have done to deserve this? Everybody else has a child who is born with, with sight. Everybody else has a child who is able to see. What is it that is wrong with me? Picture the pain and agony of a mother. Picture the pain and agony of a father. Picture the pain and agony, Melissa. Picture the pain and agony, Frank, Aunt Frank and Iris, of what the mother has to go through, what the family has to go through to reinvent their life. And then, as they are reorganizing their life, Lady Donaldson, as they are seeking to get used to this new normality, as they are seeking to, to get used to this, this experience, Regina, as they seek in to get used to this Betty, the, the, the scripture would let us know that there is the social dimension of it. So people around them, started to look on them with a bad eye, with a bad eye. Yeah, is Jamaican word. Bad eye. Started to look on them with a questioning disposition, starting to question them, Kareen, what is it that you do? What is it you have done? 
Why is it your child has now come with this kind of disability and this kind of defect? So not only do the parents have to think about the pain and agony that their child will have to face, how their lives are being reprioritized, how the finances have to be readjusted, how they have to adjust to this new normality. But now the social scorn has to also be factored in. Picture the pain upon this family. Picture the pain that is in their heart, bless more. Picture the agony, Emma, as they have to now contend, not just with the internal realities, but with the external pain. But can I talk to somebody today? Can I tell somebody in here today that no matter what you are experiencing, you are born into the right family. Hallelujah. I said you are born to the right family. You are born at the right place. You are born to the right parents. You are born in the right generation. You are born with the right skin color. Hello, somebody. You are born with the right last name. You are born in the right place. God has not made any mistakes in placing you where you are at. You are not a child of mistake. You are not a child that needs to feel as though because you don't have what others have, that you are somehow lacking. Mm. I wish I had some people in here to, 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 to say an amen. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, come with me. Come with me. Blind from birth at the time when we're meeting in John chapter 9, we are not actually told how old he is. We are not actually told his exact age, but we get a little insight a little bit later when we are told that indeed that this man, when his parents were trying to come out of it, that his parents said he is of age. So we know that he has passed childhood years we are aware that he's no longer a child we are we are knowledgeable that he has now entered upon if he's not already into the years of adulthood but brothers and sisters come with me today because I want to give some effect. I want us to have a softer gentler position towards those who are born with this Abilities to those individuals just us who do not have what we have. They may not have hands like we do. They may not be able to speak like I am. They may not be able to hear like we are. They may not be able to see like we are, but as a church family, we must see them nonetheless as children of God. They are children of the almighty God. They are valuable in his sight. They are precious. They are unique. They are even sometimes more precious than we are. If you don't believe me, come with me. Come with me. Because in John chapter 9, we see the remarkable story, brothers and sisters, how this man born into this family, he was broken, he was blind, his family was had to go through the, the, the pain of, 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 of and the reality of, of, of a, having a child who was disabled. And so Jesus was passing by and Jesus saw the man. The people in the congregation recognized that Jesus had a special thing for him. Because when Jesus came into the area, Jesus, brothers and sisters, Jesus, Jesus was looking on him. Jesus was giving him some attention. Hello, somebody. Can I tell you something? People may look on you today with scorn, but tomorrow they will look on you with a joy in their lives. When your life is touched by Jesus, he will change your story. Hello, somebody. Douglas Davis, I'm here to tell you today that when your life is touched by Jesus, he will change your story. Vivine Rushford, I'm here to tell you today that when your life is touched by Jesus, no matter what this your story will change. My Bible tells me Jesus came, but the disciples looked on him and the disciples were with him, looked on him and he asked him the question. So master, tell us who indeed did sin? Mm. Did this man sin or did his parents sin? Now, brothers and sisters, this is a very strange question to ask because the man was born blind. Hello. <laughs> Sometimes our false theology impacts the way we, we treat others. Sometimes 
the way we think about God as an individual impacts the way we treat them. But the Bible would let us know, brothers and sisters, that Jesus said, no, no, is neither has this man seen nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Somebody is not hearing the preacher today. Can I get a little bit excited in here today? Can I get a bit excited in here today, Kislan? Can I let you know that some people have disabilities? Some people have a little setback because God have a big comeback for them. Hello, somebody. God has has some people Amen. with disability so that he can use them as a token of his love and of his mercy. God has some people born with certain defects because he wants to use them as an agent of love and as a testimony of his grace. Stop looking on people with a bad eye. Stop thinking of them as being broken, as being fallen out of the family. I'm here to let you know children with disabilities are loved by God. Adults Amen. with disabilities have a special place by God. God said it is not because anybody sinned, but for the work of God. God wants to do something in their lives. Oh, hallelujah. And it's there that Jesus says, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Oh, brothers and sisters, you know the story. You know how, brothers and sisters, how Jesus spat upon the ground. You know how he took that sand and he placed it upon the eye. You know how he said to the blind man, hallelujah. He okay. said to the blind man, go and wash in the pool of Shiloh. Can I talk to the church today? Oh, Jesus could have healed the man. Hello, somebody. Stay with the preacher today. Jesus could have healed the man and allowed the man to see right there. He could have touched him with his hand. He could have opened his eyes with just the word of his mouth. But that the man may be seen to have respect. Hello, somebody. That the man may see him and his self-dignity may not be hurt and may not be damaged. Jesus didn't treat him like a handicapper because after years of living with blindness he was accustomed to being treated as a blind man he was accustomed to being laughed at as a blind man he was accustomed to people not giving him any attention he was used to people laughing after him he was used to people treating him bad he was used to being placed at the back bench of the church he was used to people treating him as though he was a nobody but Jesus wanted him to know you have a purpose you have meaning. You are still a person who must keep your dignity. So what did Jesus do? Jesus sent him to go and wash. While he was on his way, he was thinking about it. While the young man was on his way journeying to the pool, while he was on his way to wash his eye, brothers and sisters, he had nobody to help him. He had to use his little stick to guide him along the pathway. And that was how he was journeying. And he was journeying, counting his step. But brothers and sisters, can I tell you something today? That was the last time he was going to be walking as a blind man. Hallelujah. That was the last day, Delroy. He was going to be moving as a blind man. Sister Jenny, that was the last time he was moving towards his victory. He was moving towards his deliverance. Jesus came gave him hope. Jesus gave him a second chance of life. He was born blind, but Jesus was going to allow him to be born again. Hallelujah. He was born without his sight, but Jesus was going to give him spiritual insight as he was journeying towards his pool, as he was moving towards his victory, as he was moving. The same people on the road were watching. The same people never know. Hallelujah. That this was the day of his journey. The same people on on the road never know that this was the day of his victory. The people on the road never know. They looked at him and he was going through the same step. Can I talk to somebody today? 
Bekezilia or Naomi, please forgive me if I mispronounce the name, but I want to let you know people may look on you when you're on your way to your victory as though you are still a failure. But I want to let you know you need to keep moving towards your pool. Can I talk to somebody today? Jesus said to him, Go to the pool of Siloam. The, in, in, by interpretation, which means tent. I need you to go there. I need you to find that pool. And I want you to be an agent to participate with me in the saving of your own soul. I hear people asking the question, why is it that God does not do some things of our, on, our, on, on our behalf? Why doesn't God step in and work immediately? If God is so mighty and our God is so big, why does he have to allow us to go through so much stress and so much pressure and through COVID-19? Let me tell you something. God is more interested in doing a work in us than doing a work for us. Hallelujah. Somebody missed that. I said, God is more interested in doing a work in us than doing a work for us. You see, brothers and sisters, God is not like the, 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 the fire extinguisher that is on our wall. We only use him when we have an emergency. I want to let you know that God wants to do something inside of us. For from that moment when that blind man left Jesus, God was working on his heart. God wasn't just giving him physical sight. He was giving him spiritual sight. As he was journeying, he was purifying his heart. As he was journeying, he was giving his life over to Jesus. As he was journeying, he was opening his soul to Jesus. God could have healed him immediately, but Jesus decided he was going to put him on a path of victory. Hallelujah! When God has put you on a path of victory, do not be distracted. When God has put you on a path of victory, do not allow your past to call you back. When God has put you on a path of victory, do not allow the naysayers to come into your ear. Jesus said, you must get on a path. The journey to the pool of Silo Siloam was a moment for spiritual meditation. It was a moment for mental connection. It was a moment for divine connection with his soul. God wanted him to experience not just the victory of seeing, but the victory of getting spiritual insight, of getting spiritual spiritual power of getting spiritual victory. Can I talk to somebody? Amen. Many of us ask the question, Pastor, why does God allow me to go through so much? Luton Central, Junior Johnson, Alden Ferrell, you may have asked the question, why am I going through? God, you can do all that we read in the Bible. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he can. God can still part Red Sea. God can still shut the mouth of the lion. God can still open doors. But God wants us on a spiritual path to victory. Amen. He wants to do more in us than he wants to do for us. Some of us only want God to work for us. Some of us don't want God to be in us, to work in us, to change our mind and our thinking, our heart and our, and our feeling. Some of us don't want that. But the journey to the pool of Siloam was a moment of spiritual connection with Jesus. From birth until adulthood, he was born blind. He was blind. But brothers and sisters, his day of victory was come. And the Bible lets us know, brothers and sisters, he went to the pool. And in verse 7, the scriptures say, he came, seen. Come on, somebody. You don't understand. You don't understand, man. You don't understand. You don't get what I said. I said the blind man came, seen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Church, I said the blind man came, seen. Amen, pastor. You may have a little handicap now. Mm. You may have a little disability. But I want to let you know that your day of change will come. Hallelujah. Shame. Yes. Come on, Shane. Come on, Charles family. Nita, Bernie, I say your day of change is coming. Amen. Amen. Mark and Dana Wilson, Betty, 
I want to let you know your day of change will come. God will not have you in a state of blindness forever. No, no, my friend. No, no. <laughs> mm. Watch this verse eight, verse eight, verse eight, verse eight, verse eight. The neighbors, therefore. Come on, somebody. Watch this now. I said, watch this now. You got to catch this. <laughs> the neighbors, therefore. And they which before had seen that he was blind, said, is not this he that sat and begged? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Can I get a praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Church, the neighbors recognized the man as he that sat and begged. But I want to challenge you today because it's family day. And I want to ask the question, how did this man get to the place where he sat and begged? It could be that his parents threw him out of the house. It could be that because his parents couldn't handle it, they couldn't deal with the pressure of having a blind child. It could be that because he, 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 it cost them too much money. It could be that they left him out in the cold to live life on his own. It could be that the social pressure and being mocked and jeered and scarred by individuals in the society had its impact upon them as parents. And they decided that you couldn't stay in my house anymore. And they left him to live a life outside of the home. The reality is, everyone, not everybody is able to deal with these life circumstances. Some mothers cannot even deal with the birth of a child. They've born the child and throw the child into some place and somebody come and find him. The pressures of life sometimes can cause us to make some decision. But can I tell you something? No matter what your mother and your father have done you, no matter what your mother and your father have taught you, no matter how, what your mother and father, how they have treated you, I want to let you know you're still valuable in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. Psalm, the psalmist David says in chapter 27 in the 27th division of the psalm verse 10 when mother and father forsakes you i the lord will pick you up there are many family members hurting today because mothers have forsaken them fathers have neglected them Uncles have written them off. There are many family members, many people today who are hurting, living a life of pain and living out in the dark, living out in the cold because a mother couldn't handle the pain of, being a of having a blind child and a father couldn't deal with the financial pressures. Somebody couldn't deal with the scorn. But my Bible tells me, Jesus will pick you up. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells the brothers and sisters, the neighbors, the neighbors looked and saw him and the neighbor says, I know him that in Jamaican, that is Jamaican. <laughs> in, 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 in your standard English, is that not the blind man? <laughs> in Jamaica, we just say, I know him that. Yes, sir. <laughs> is that not he that sat and begged? Some of them said, yes, it is he. Others said, no, it looked like him. But he responded and he said, I am he. Come on, somebody. Yes, yes, yeah, me that. <laughs> the blind man said, yes, it's me. Yes, sir. It's I. So they came to him and asked the question, 
that your eyes became open and he answered them come on somebody verse 11 and he answered them and said a man that is called jesus Amen. jesus changes the Jesus enters the life of the young man and Jesus gives him a new purpose, a new meaning, but also a new vision. The Pharisees couldn't believe it. The Pharisees got upset and talked about calling him and, and says, come tell us, who is it that did this? And he told them the story. And the, 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 came in verse 17. And they said unto the blind man again, what sayest thou of him that he has opened your eyes? And he said, he's a prophet. But the Jews, verse 18, did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them saying, is this your son you, who was born blind? How then does he now see? So they couldn't believe it. And they started to make an issue out of it. Can I pause here to make a statement to you? Listen to me. If you don't get anything else I said today, get this. There are people who will make your victories look like defeat. Somebody not with the preacher? Yes, yes. I will hear. I said... There are people who will make your victories look like defeat. When God has worked in your life, some people will make it look like you know, do nothing. The Pharisees, instead of praising God for the goodness shown towards this man, took him into the Sanhedrin council and started to question him, Brother Hill. Mm -hmm. Question him. Mm -hmm. God work mightily in your life and you come and church and, and testify about his goodness. And some people don't hear about the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. All they hear is what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. But I know that don't happen at your church. It's just <laughs> down here in Jamaica. <laughs> yes, Who is this man? The Jews did not believe. So what did they do, brothers and sisters? They call the parents. Mm -hmm. No, I find this story very amazing. My focus is not so much on the blind man. My focus is on the parents, on the family. How do parents treat their children in times of challenges? How do you treat your children? Look at this. Because some of us love church office more than we love with children. Ouch. Mm. Uh, look for the new person. <laughs> look for see, me. I look for see when this stone come in. <laughs> <laughs> we see you, look, Pastor. Uh. The scriptures let us know. They call the parents and they ask the parents, is this your child? Who has received said? Hear them. Hear them with the political answer. Yeah, right. mm. um, um, number one, yes, sir, he's, he's our son. I feel we pick me that. He's our son. Number one, our son. I, we are confirming to you that he is our son. Number two, we are confirming to you that he indeed was born blind. But number three, Pitney is spelled P-I-C-K-N-E-Y, Stacy. P-I-C-K-N-E-Y. The, 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 the mother said, yes. Fui Pitney. Number two, yes, in barn blind. But number three, as to how he's able now to see, we don't know. We cannot tell you. No, brethren, that was a lie. That was a lie. When you're paid, listen to me, family members must not be ashamed of you. Hallelujah, somebody not hearing me, somebody not hearing me today. I said family members must not be ashamed of you. Amy, you can't have your husband and him shame for walk with you in a public. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Brother Joseph. 
You can't fight and you fail to score on him love. Mm hmm. Chioita, you see those nice children you have there. You can't be ashamed of your family. You mustn't be ashamed of your family. All when you have a one, a one foot son. Love your one foot son. Hello, somebody. Because let me tell you something. You're once a man, but you're twice a child. Amen. And what parents must remember, the way you treat your child when they are young, they're going to come back to treat you later on when you turn old. Mm. Amen. Many of you not going to have anybody to change the diapers for you when you turn old because you, 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 you as, as, as we say in Jamaica, you cuss off the picnic them. Mm -hmm. True, true. You are not going to be young and strong forever. <laughs> You're not going to be nice and pretty forever. One day the teeth going to drop out. You're going to have indentures. <laughs> One day the back going to bend over. Mm -hmm. The hearing going to get dull. Watch how we treat our children today, not because we have the power and privilege of authority and, and body and health means that we treat them like they're nobodies. If you treat them like nobodies today, they will treat you like nobodies tomorrow. I don't get any amen. That's amen. all right. Amen. Amen. Amen, Pastor. These parents decided they weren't going to, they know the story. But they were more focused on church office mm. than they were focused on the story of God's grace in their child's life. Imagine, remember the Lord said, you know, this child was not born blind because he's seen or the parents seen, you know. Jesus says, this child is born blind for the glory of God to be revealed in him. Mm -hmm. And this was the moment. And in that moment when God came through for their son, in that moment when God performed the greatest miracle at that particular time, they were still ashamed and all they could focus on was the little office they held, the little membership on the books. Mm. A mother called me one day. She was a leader in my church and her daughter got pregnant. And she said, Pastor, I'm going to be resigning my post. I said, why are you resigning your post? She said, because her daughter got pregnant. I said, no. It's your daughter who will get pregnant, it's not you. It's your daughter who will get pregnant, not you. I say, you go and you love your daughter. I am not sanctioning um, children out of wedlock. No, that's not what I'm sanctioning. But if the baby come out of wedlock, what are you going to do? Love the child. Mm -hmm. Amen. Love the child. Mm -hmm. Because you still have an opportunity to win back your child and that child for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Many of us who in the church now are children who were born out of wedlock, yet still we're voting out people because, they, come on, somebody. Mm. That's all right. You don't have to say amen. His pastor said it. That's all right. <laughs> I'm closing up. I'm closing up. I'm closing up. I'm closing up. So the parents said, we know he's our child. We know he was born blind. But as to how he came that way, I do not. How he's able to see now, I don't know. But it's a lie. The lying. But because they didn't want to be kicked out of the church, they looked and they said, he's of age, he can speak for himself. What a good what a good response. What a good comeback. Talk the truth, Melissa. That's not good. This <laughs> <laughs> man is of age. <laughs> you talk, you him. Ask him. He can talk. He can speak for himself. And the scripture says they came to him. And they asked him. And in verse 25, it says, whether the parents asked him, 
the answer he says, whether he be a sinner or not, I know not. One thing I know that we're as I was blind, now I see. I close with three points today. Number one, sometimes the people with the position of God are blind to the work of God in you. Amen. Amen. True, true. Not true. Can I go again, brethren? I'm, I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm closing. I said, sometimes the people, the people with the positions of God are blind to the work of God in you. Mm -hmm. If nobody else knows what God is doing in your life, you must know it. True, true. You must have a testimony. You must be able to know what God has done for you, man. This man know what God did for him, even though the church leaders didn't. You must have an experience with God. Number two, there are people who will take the good work of God in your life and make the vision of it. There are people who will take the good work of God in your life and make the vision. Now, brethren, talk the truth. If you and I were alive and we saw a man that was born blind and we see that he's able to, 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 to see again. A praise and a tambourine may knock, a drum may knock. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. say in the name of the Lord. Hey. Yes, man. Mm -hmm. But there are some people, brothers and sisters, who no matter what God do in your life, they still will talk down to you. They still will treat you like a nobody. They will still try to make a division of it. You have to watch those church people because you, you must make them make you leave the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you follow people in this church, listen, I born in it. I grow in it. And right now I work for it. But let me tell you the truth. If you follow some of these people in this church, you, know, you don't even plan to go heaven. Amen. That's so Serious sad. thing. Some of these people in the church will make you lose your own soul. Mm. But this man was so caught up with Jesus that he said, we're as once I was blind. Now I'm able to see whether I'm a sinner or not. I don't know. But one thing I can tell you, I once was blind, but now I'm able to see. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Somebody should say amen. amen. Because amen. God will change his stories. Amen. 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 Finally, as I close. So point number one. Sometimes the people with the positions of God are blind to the work of God in you. But you must know what God is doing in your life. Number two, there are people who will take the good work of God in you and make a division of it. Finally, number three, some people will not defend you because they live in fear of others. Mm. some people will never speak good of you because they have a circle around them that speak evil of you the parents wouldn't even rise to the defense of the son because of church office if you were. because they were afraid of being put out today I ask us the question how do we treat those with disabilities around us I want you to notice something as I close. The Pharisees had physical sight, but they were spiritually blind. The blind man was physically blind, but he had spiritual sight. We are not better than others because we have physical connection. We are better than 
helps when we have spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. Today, I say to you, when mother and father forsakes you, God will pick you up. Amen. He amen. will not leave you alone. Amen and amen. Children with disabilities, adults with disabilities are still children of God. Amen. Amen. amen.